Welcome to Witness Warrior Watchmen. It's good to have you here. Earlier this year, I told y'all I would explain the reason why I renamed this channel. Over the next three weeks, I intend to do just that. Today, we're going to focus on being a witness. But before we get started, let's pray. Father God, come to you at this time, Father. Just asking that you be with me, use me, speak through me, have the words I speak be your words. Father, I ask that the people watching this video that you open their hearts and minds to hear what you would have them hear through this message. Ask all these things in your son's holy and most precious name. Amen. Today, we're going to start in Matthew's Gospel, the 28th chapter, and we'll be reading verses 18 through 20. Turn with me in your Bibles if you would. It says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This passage is commonly known as the Great Commission. It is where Jesus gives us, or I'm sorry, gives the disciples their marching orders, and in effect, our marching orders. Here, Matthew gets straight to the point, right to the heart of the matter. He takes us to the reason behind Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Matthew has an urgency to him in this. The last chapter of his gospel. It begins with the brief account of the resurre re resurrection and quickly moves on to the words we just read. He wants us to grasp the purpose that we, as followers of Christ, need to have in our daily lives. Jesus calls us to action in these closing words. Let's break down the actions we are called to take. I see four actions in Jesus' words. Let's look at each of them. Number one, go. Therefore, go. We are called to go. We can't simply stay in our pews. We can't simply stay in our houses. We can't wait for the world to come to us. We are not called to a passive faith. We are not called to a passive mission. It is an active faith. It is an active mission. We need to go. But go where? All nations. Turn with me if you would to Acts chapter one and we'll be reading verses eight and nine. Acts one, verse eight and nine reads, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This could be considered another version of the Great Commission. These are the final words Jesus said before he was taken up to heaven. Like in Matthew, Jesus calls us to go. He calls us to be his witnesses. But go where? Witness where? In Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. All nations, to the ends of the earth? Clearly, it is a global mission. Does that overwhelm you? It does me, at least when I look at the magnitude of it. 
it probably seems over it probably seemed overwhelming to to the eleven disciples as well. Have you ever heard the question, how do you eat an elephant? That might be the question we are asking when we are told all nations to the ends of the earth. The answer, however, makes it not so overwhelming, one bite at a time. Jerusalem, one bite. Judea, one bite. Samaria, one bite. And so on and so forth and eventually to the ends of the earth. That's the approach the disciples took. The book of Acts shows us that. They started in Jerusalem and eventually spread through the known world. They were able to accomplish it in roughly 30 years. So let's start with our own Jerusalem. What does our Jerusalem look like? For me, it is my circle of influence, my family, my friends, co-workers, my community. It is the same for you. Okay, now we know where to go. What's next? Point number two, make disciples. We are called to be disciple makers. What is a disciple, you might be asking? It isn't a term we use very often today. When we do think of a disciple, we probably think of the early church, of the, the apostles, Jesus' disciples. But let me just say this. If you are a Christian, then you are a disciple. Turn with me to Acts chapter 11 verses 26. I just want to read the last sentence of this verse. Acts 11, 26. The very last uh, sentence of this verse reads, all right, if I can find it, Acts 11, 26. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So, like I said, a disciple is a Christian. A Christian is a disciple. Which means as Christians, we are called to make other Christians. So we've got go down. We've got make disciples down. But Jesus doesn't stop there. So neither should we. Number three, baptize them. We are called to baptize new Christians. Baptism is an outward sign of a changed life. It is a way of showing that we were buried with Christ and as we come up out of the water we are raised to new life. Let's not forget that it is a part of the Great Commission. It is an important part of the Christian faith. The early church understood that Peter understood that. Acts 2 verses 37 through 39 shows us that. Acts 2, 37 through 39. 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off for all whom the Lord our God will call. Philip, he understood it as well. Acts, thir Acts verse eight, or I'm sorry, Acts chapter eight, verses 36 through 38 shows us this. Acts eight, 36 through 38. As they traveled along the road, 
They came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? <clears throat> Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. The eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus is, I'm sorry, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Ananias, he understood this. In Acts chapter 9, verse 17 through 18, shows us that. And it reads, 9, verse 17 through 18. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. We as Christians today need to understand that baptism is an important part of our Christian faith. So, we are called to go, we are called to make disciples, we are called to baptize them. But there is one more action that Jesus calls us to do in the Great Commission. And I think that this particular action is where a lot of us fall down I think that this action tends to get neglected. So number four, teach them. It is not enough for us to just bring people to Christ. It isn't even enough to baptize people. We are called to teach them what it means to be a Christian. Teach them how to grow in their faith. We are called to walk beside them through this journey called life. This action could be the hardest for us to do. It requires a day in, day out commitment. It requires us to be willing to open the Bible and meditate on Jesus' teachings. How can we teach others about Jesus if we aren't in the words ourselves in the word ourselves? So there you have it. The Great Commission. Does it still seem daunting? If so, let me show you just a little more. Let's go back to the passage in Matthew. We read and studied out the middle of this portion of this passage. Now let's take a look at the first part and the last part. Go back to Matthew, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then if we skip down to the end of verse 20, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus has all authority. Jesus will be with us always. Again, let's go over to Acts and look again at verse eight of chapter one which reads, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. <coughs> we received the power we need when the Holy Spirit came on us. Let us use the power we've been given both wisely and effectively. Finally, in closing, I want to leave you with the challenge. Be a witness this week. Share Jesus with someone this week. And if it's not too much to ask, share your experience in the comments below. I would love to hear how fellow brothers and sisters are being witnesses. For now, I will say goodbye. And God bless you this week. Remember, next week we are going, we are gonna look at being witnesses. Or, I'm sorry, 
we just looked at witnesses, we are going to look at being warriors. We are called to be witnesses. We are called to be warriors. We are called to be watchmen. We are called to go and make disciples. It is a high calling. Will we rise to the challenge? Thank you for watching today, guys. I encourage you to hit that like button and also share with your friends. And like I mentioned earlier, share some comments about your experience of witnessing this week. Until next time, God bless and be safe.